Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie on Wednesday, September the 13th, 2023. Usually I look at events which have happened or I look at uh, events which are happening. So I look at um, the chart every day for the positions of the planets or I look at um, previous events including births, the things that have happened in the past. And today, though, I want to look at future events, or at least one future event. Um, and that future event is the presidential election, which takes place on November the 5th, 2024. So I want to look at the horoscope for that day. Um, you know, it's an important day, people are thinking about it. So, you know, what's going on? And how does that how does that event occur um, for the United States? And how does it occur for possible candidates? You know, we expect Joe Biden to be running um, for president again uh, at, at the end of next year, um, unless something bad happens to him or he decides it's all too much, in which case it would be Kamala Harris, I assume. Um and then, of course, the runaway favorite uh, for the re Republican nomination is Donald Trump. So what about him? How does it how does it occur for him? Um, you know, at this stage, I'm not quite ready to make um, forecasts about who's going to win, who's going to lose at the end of next year. I'm starting to get an idea, though. Um, but uh, I don't quite want to want to want to commit myself there. Um, but before I do that, I want to look at the positions of the positions of the planets for today, which is Wednesday, uh, September the 13th, um, 2023. So here we go. Here, here is the, here, here, here's today. Um, I'm afraid today is somewhat downbeat, um, reason being is that you know the moon is in Virgo so the moon in Virgo it's not the most exciting place for the moon to be um, moon in Virgo is sort of sensible down to earth um, um, likes to focus on the details and um, that is going to be our focus you know we've just you know we've just had the moon in Leo moon in Leo more about people's egos being able to tell the world how wonderful we are. But Moon and Virgo doesn't want to hear about that. Moon and Virgo does, um, d does not like it when people um, blow their own trumpets. That's not, not a Virgo thing. And Virgo likes to take people like that down. Um, so this Moon and Virgo, which is, it's very focused on, you know, our material environment and our physical environment. Um, and, you know, Virgo is a sign that's often connected with health. Um, so it's going to be important for us to have a healthy environment, fresh air, all that kind of stuff. Um, we don't want to get involved with sort of additives um, uh, in our food. So, yeah, you know, it's a time for to have a healthy diet, healthy lifestyle, get an adequate amount of exercise, get an adequate amount of sleep. You know, it's that kind of day. And the moon is, you can see, it is opposition Saturn and it's conjunct Mercury. So, you know, the opposition Saturn, moon opposition Saturn, yeah, it's very serious. Um, we are aware of restriction. We're aware of all the things that could be holding us back, all the things that are stopping us doing what we want to do. Um, we just have to manage those those restrictions. We can't, we can't um, fight them. We can't... Um, defeat them we just have to work with them and so that's going to be an important theme you know moon conjunct mercury okay it's quite verbal um, it's a good day for discussing things but for discussing serious matters so let us say um you want to give you want to have a serious talk with someone maybe because they've done something wrong uh, now might be the time to do it, um, particularly if you're ready to make to have um, a powerful impact. 
If you want to bring people down to earth, then now is the time to do it. You know, when you've got a situation where the moon is aspecting both Saturn and Mercury, you know, these are serious thoughts. Um, this, these are, um, you know, thoughts about... Um, Thoughts about thoughts about the world and how, how difficult it is sometimes, um, and yeah, it, it it focuses again on all the things holding us back. Um, but we don't want to get too too upset about it all. Um, at, at worst, there could be a certain feeling of depression about today. Um, you know, it may feel that you know things really aren't going anywhere and it, it, it's all it's all a waste of time uh, at its worst but you do have to realize that we're talking about the moon um, the moon is a fast moving planet fast moving planet uh, i know it's not really a planet it's a satellite but the moon moves quickly so if you are feeling that you know everything is is grim that nothing's going anywhere you've got to remember that this is just a short term thing um, the moon will move on um, so um, don't get too worried about it. Um, and on a more positive note, uh, Jupiter is aspecting the Saturn uh, is aspecting the Saturn Pluto um, midpoint. You can see that Ju the Saturn Pluto midpoint is about is about here. Um, and Jupiter is sort of here. So Jupiter's square, the Saturn-Pluto midpoint. Um, you know, yes, Jupiter square, Saturn-Pluto. Okay, it's a bit, it, in one sense, it's a bit grueling. You know, Saturn-Pluto is about the desire to, uh, it, it's about the desire to overcome restriction. You know, Saturn is about restriction, Pluto is about transformation, and Jupiter is about expansion. You know, so Jupiter is, is saying, yeah, I know that it's all very difficult and it's all very grim, and I know that there are huge obstacles, but Jupiter says, no, I can overcome them. And so with Jupiter square the Saturn-Pluto midpoint, in spite of the fact that the day is very downbeat, um, I think if you actually put the work in and you're ready to say, I don't care, I'm still going to um, make something of it. Um, I don't care how difficult things are. I'm just going to keep going. Then in the end, you have the potential to really move mountains. So uh, that is perhaps the silver lining um, to the cloud, which is today. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at the picture for the 12 signs um, so um, these are these are my forecasts for today which is Wednesday September the 13th 2023 Aries you don't want to take the world and its problems too seriously but maybe you have misjudged the situation. There are people and situations which cannot be treated in an offhand way. And if you don't deal with them in a serious and responsible way, there could be trouble. In fact, if you put in the work and the preparation, you'll be saving yourself a lot of grief. Taurus. Today, you have a somewhat detached approach. And... You may take the view that you're somehow estranged um, from other people, for example, your friends. Yet you somehow have to give the impression of emotional involvement. And ideally, you'll make an effort to listen to your feelings. Also, it seems that your idea of fun is very different from everyone else's. Gemini, you've got a choice. You can keep a low profile and not engage with other people and their problems. Or you can, go in, you can go out into the world and do what you can to um, make the world a better place. This requires you to overcome something which is like, uh, you know, it's like having to deal with, um, you know, a great lump of concrete. You know, that's, that's the fact that the moon is opposition Saturn. 
But, you know, I think you can handle it um, if you really make the effort. Cancer. You've got lots to say, or at least you think you have. But I don't think you fully understood the impact, um, you know, you can have, you know, with this opposition between the moon and moon and Saturn. Remember, moon is your ruling planet and it's conjunct and also moon is conjunct Mercury. Your words can be very harsh and the response might not be what you expect, especially um, if you're being very critical. And someone with a very different perspective from, from you could start behaving in a surprising way. Leo, be careful with money because there is an opposition between the moon and Saturn across the finance axis of your solar chart. There's a danger that you spend too much, for example, not just on yourself, but on others. Perhaps you feel pressure to spend money on others. So you must curb your generosity and understand you know, what the times are like. Um, and in general, um, if you're careless with money, then you'll quickly get punished. And whatever you do, you must do it carefully. Virgo, your inclination is to forge ahead with your plans. After all, the moon is in your star sign. But you need to understand the underlying picture, which in some respects is quite complicated. There are things close to home that require attention. And with the moon making an opposition to Saturn, one particular person, perhaps at work, could cause a lot of trouble. Libra, look after yourself and realise that there are limits to everything. If you push yourself too hard, you could exhaust yourself and even undermine yourself physically. And if you enjoy yourself too much, you could run into trouble. So probably it's a day for keeping a low profile and for avoiding chaotic situations. Scorpio, you're inclined to put your energy into socialising, but is it really worth the effort? When you're with other people, things happen unexpectedly and human emotions could be difficult to predict. Also, there's plenty of scope for jealousy if someone gets too much attention. But maybe it's a day for doing what you do best and the world around you can take it or leave it. Sagittarius, today you seem very ambitious and if you can handle yourself in the right way, you can achieve good results. But you have to consider the impact you're having. Right now, not everyone can handle you thanks to a stressful aspect between the moon and Saturn. Maybe you're being too harsh or your words are becoming abrasive. Try to be more diplomatic. Capricorn. Today you have a chance to reach beyond your normal bounds and to expose yourself to brand new experiences. But in the process you have to break free from a situation that is holding you back. And if you're travelling today a moon-Saturn opposition may cause some problems. Elsewhere, you and someone else have opinions that are sharply different. Aquarius. You yourself, I think, are fine. You have an intelligent and mature approach which allows you to quietly get on with things. But the world around you isn't quite so settled. For example, financial issues caused by another person's carelessness, could suddenly raise their head. And a bad, a bad idea that really you're not involved with might need to be challenged. Might, yeah, might need to be challenged because, you know, if, this, if someone goes ahead with this idea, it, it, it could cause um, a lot of trouble for everyone. Pisces. It's a day when relationships are going to be important. Uh, when your charisma will start to make a difference. But you can't expect everything to go smoothly. After all, the moon is making an opposition to Saturn. 
relationships can take many twists and finding peace and harmony could be hard work. But uh, you will be making it easier for yourself if you adopt a responsible attitude. So that's uh, the, the 12 signs for today. So what I want to do now is look at the um, I Ching. So as always, I threw three coins in the air and I asked the question, you know, what is Wednesday going to be like for visitors to my YouTube channel? So uh, the first hexagram I got was 10, treading. Um, I kind of like this hexagram. Um, I like the imagery of this hexagram. It's about a tiger. And, you know, it's like you've got to tiptoe around a tiger. And the one thing you must not do is tread on a tiger's tail. Because um, if you do, it will bite you. <laughs> um, so we're in that kind of situation where we're dealing with, a, with, with something that is really quite delicate. And we must be careful what we do, how we tread. Um, now, this line, the fifth line, it moves. And the I Ching um, does gives, gives, give, um, it gives a warning about the fifth line. But uh, it also tells us that we need to be resolute. You know, if we're going to do something, we must do it. We mustn't... Um, you know, just say, oh, well, just because there's a danger, we can't do it. Of course, it depends on what the danger is. You know, if you're dealing with something, <laughs> dealing with something that could kill you, for example, or something really dangerous, then obviously stay away from it. But I think um, in most situations, we're going to be talking about um, maybe a social situation, something, um, you know, but if it goes wrong, we're not literally going to get killed. We might be embarrassed or we might lose some money or lose face or whatever. Um, but we just have to be, we have to be resolute. We have to say, yeah, this is a situation that needs to be dealt with, but we also need to be aware of the danger. So, yes, we may have to walk past this metaphorical tiger. Um, it may be something we have to do. We have to may have to summon up courage to do that. Um, but we must watch where we're stepping. We must always be aware of, that if we do something wrong, um, it's going to bite us. Um, you know, it may be, for example, we have to confront someone. You know, today there is a moon opposition Saturn. Um, it may be necessary to confront someone. Um, there's a danger there um, because we don't know how they're going to react. So we have to be careful. You know, it's something we have to do, but we have to be very careful what we say, um, for example. So, yeah, it's not, I'm not saying don't do it got to be resolute, um, persevere, unless, of course, it's a real danger um, that affects life or limb or could bankrupt you or whatever. Um, but just, just, be, be, just be aware of the dangers. Now, this hexagram treading, it does, um, it does change because of that fifth line. Um, and so it... Uh, it moves to 38 opposition and you know this uh this is kind of fitting because remember there's an opposition between the moon and saturn today um that's that's the dominant um astrological aspect and here we have opposition um we, you know it's 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 not great you know there are people that don't see eye to eye with us there are people we don't get on with and we're going to have to deal with them and it's you know, the fact that people have a negative attitude is going to restrict what we can do. But again, that, 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 is, that, was, that was shown independently by the fact that the moon is opposition Saturn. Uh, moon, you know, moon in Virgo, opposition Saturn in Pisces. So it's just going to be difficult to get things done. Um, you know, even if we sort of confront people, we're resolute, we're still going to have to deal with an issue. And we're not going to, you know, we're not going to be friends with them necessarily. In fact, probably aren't going to be friends with them. We can't be friends with everyone. And we've got to deal with this world where there is opposition, where where some people don't get on with us. And it's just the way it is. And we just got to do um, the best we can. So I'm going to now move back to the astrology. And I want to look um, at... Um, I want to look at uh, the presidential election. 
uh, which is on November the 5th, uh, 2024. So here's a chart for it. Now, I've set this chart for noon, Washington, D.C., and I'm sure there are going to be some people that say, oh, but yeah, but um, there's this ballot maybe up in New England and they start voting at midnight or whatever. So that's the point you should be taking. But, you know, it's really difficult to say that um, an election starts at a precise time, particularly now you've got um, you've got all these ways in which you can vote. You can vote beforehand. Um, you can vote, um, you know, whatever, I don't know, electronically, postally, so many ways to vote. Um, so, um, you know, I'm not I'm not really convinced that it's useful or helpful to think about this election as happening at a at a precise time. Um, and, you know, it's, you know it does, it's not helped by the fact that the US is on different time zones. It's like in the UK, I believe the ballots open at 7 a.m. Uh, so, you know, that's that then England, UK is on a single time zone. Um, and a lot of other countries are on a single time zone. Um, but you, the US is not. And so I don't think we should get hung up on, to, on a particular time um, for the election. Um, so you can see, for example, the moon is in Capricorn. Well, it may be in, it's in Capricorn in some places. It's in Sagittarius in other places. So it's, it's, um, uh, it's, um, it's, yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's the way, um, that's, that's the chart. Um, I'm not saying it's a particularly dramatic chart. Uh, you can see Uranus is at 2543 um, Taurus. That is conjunct Algol. I've been talking about Algol quite a lot. Um, Algol is um, the head of the demon. Um, and so this is a t the election is happening at a time when there is, um, um, you know, there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of unpleasantness, nastiness, evil around um, at the end of 2024 with Uranus um, on that point. Um, things can suddenly happen um, which, cause, which cause a lot of destruction. But I'm not saying that that is specific to the, to the election. Um, Venus is... There's, this, there's an opposition between um, Venus and Jupiter... Um, and an opposition between Mars and Pluto. Um, so uh, I, I think the Venus-Jupiter opposition is important. Um, you know, I suppose you know, Venus is a sort of universal, uh, is a universal uh, sign significator of women. Uh, opposition Jupiter. Um, maybe... In a general sense, uh, that might indicate sort of rights, you know, uh, you know, for example, women's right to control their body. And, that, you know, that that hints that maybe abortion is going to be a bigger issue at re-election than I'm thinking it is. Venus opposition, Jupiter, um, Mars opposition, Pluto um, is um, Mars opposition, Pluto um, it, it's not a nice day. Mars opposition Pluto is suggesting there's a lot of tension coming up. Mar, you know, Mars is about aggression, beginning of Leo, and it's opposition Pluto in Capricorn. You know, things are boiling. Um, so that might be how the Moon Pluto, um, how the Moon Pluto um, opposition um, is working. Um, but you know, it's 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 not just the chart of the election. Uh, you know, we have to we have to look we have we have to look at the election chart in context, um, and I also and I so I want to consider how the election affects the United States. Uh, so, if we take the United States chart um, and we um, we do, we just look at you know what is happening to the USA chart. Um, um, at the time of the election, you know what 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 are the big aspects? Um, that Venus Jupiter that Venus Jupiter opposition, uh, which I talked about, um, hits the United States Mars. 
it's you know it's right on um america's mars um at 2123 the mars the the venus jupiter midpoint um is on that mars so uh that is really angry um now jupiter opposition mars it may r say something about foreign relations and how other countries are responding to the united states um that may indicate that there's a big foreign policy um aspect to the election um with with Jupiter, you know with jupiter you know with jupiter hitting the mars then venus is hitting the mars as well and you know that also might you know that might that reinforces perhaps what i say that abortion is going to be um is going to be um a big issue in the election you know i suppose people on the right uh the republicans often say that you know when it comes to it when people vote um abortion doesn't really matter i mean because there are other more important things to consider like the economy um but sort of democrats are saying no i mean you know listening to sort of um fairly a liberal radio station you know they're saying yeah i mean that's abortion is going to be a big issue at the election i don't know but uh that venus opposition jupiter is suggesting that actually abortion might be um an import might be um an important issue um but i mean i don't think that it's i don't think it's a great day for the us i um saturn is at tw saturn's at 12:47 12 pisces so saturn is um saturn is square the the united states is ascendant um so uh the ascendant you know i think the fi that's for 5:10 p.m. that ascendant is a really sensitive point for america for the united states you know we saw that when we looked at um the horoscope of when um when 911 happened pluto was exactly on america's ascendant here saturn is square united states is ascendant so i think it's a i i do really think it's a difficult time and i and i think because the ascendant and the descendant are connected are often connected with foreign policy relations with other countries i think i think there's a big foreign policy um uh, aspect to to the election now that's kind of not particularly normal because you know um the american electorate is um sort of notoriously inward looking just looking at domestic matters and not not worrying too much about what's going on um what's going on in the rest of the world um so that's uh that's that's the, the saturn square saturn square square saturn uh sorry saturn square um the ascendant now one other thing i should say about jupiter you know jupiter is conjunct um at the united states is mars it's also square the united states is neptune so the united states has a mars neptune square in its natal chart um that may indicate um foreign adventures it may indicate putting its putting its its force into areas without really considering the consequences you know mars neptune square you know look how um the united states um intervened in the middle east got involved in syria in 2011 in the arab spring and look at the chaos that caused that's mars square neptune putting and putting military energy into something um and not really realizing what the full consequences are going to be and perhaps jupiter you know particularly jupiter's in gemini or you know you think that jupiter's going to be a favorable influence hitting america's mars but jupiter's in gemini jupiter doesn't work very well in gemini um so the consequences of america's adventurism may actually be felt um may be felt um during during this election um so um so you know overall i think it's i think it's it's kind of quite quite a difficult a difficult election um it's it's not going to be a great day anyone thinking that this election is going to resolve anything um i think is mistaken it's just going to make matters worse um who whoever wins um so in considering the election it's it's always a good idea to look at uh, the new moon and the full moon before the election so um the 
This is the new moon on November the 1st, 2024, uh, set for Washington, D.C. I mean, it has to be set for Washington, D.C. because Washington, D.C. is the capital of the United States. It's the political center of the United States. And so there's a new moon at 9.35 Scorpio. And you can see that Uranus is exactly on the descendant. Um, and you've got, you know, that Mars-Pluto opposition I talked about is is now um, slightly different because Mars is not in Leo, it's in Cancer. So it's Mars at the very end of Cancer, um, Pluto, very end of Capricorn. And yeah, and you've got Uranus on the, um, Uranus on the, um, on the Descendant. Um, you know, Uranus is, is the country's enemies. And uh, that reinforces the idea that, uh, there's going to be a strong foreign policy um, aspect to to this election. Um, whether it's connected with the Ukra with Ukraine, I don't know whether the Ukraine war is going to still be going on. I suspect it won't be, but there may be some other fight, some other in some other um, uh, battle that America's involved in, um, some other proxy war. I don't know. And then you've got the full moon prior to the election. So here is, here's the full moon, again, set for Washington, D.C. Um, this full moon, uh, October the 17th, 2024, is really, is really difficult. Um, you have got, um, you've got Sun conjunct the Ascendant. Um, uh, okay, not a problem. Uh, but then you've got the moon on the descendant. Again, this ascendant, descendant relations with, with the rest of the world. And you've got Mars is Mars is square this full moon. You've got Pluto on the IC. So yeah, this this full moon is um this full moon is really difficult. Um and um I I think the state the state of the world and the state of America going going into the election um, is going to be is going to be really tough. Um, so uh, that's the picture going into the election. Um, yeah, I don't think it's um, I don't think it's um, particularly favourable. You know, with this. Um, with this effectively a grand cross, you know, just to remind you, you've got Sun, square Mars, um, almost square Pluto. And this, yeah, this, this full moon is is difficult and it doesn't really suggest a country that is at ease with itself. Now, we then have to consider how is this election going to impact um some of the personalities involved. Um, I'm going to go through this very quickly, but let's let's start with Trump. Um, so here's Trump's chart, and this is Trump with the um, uh, with the with the um, chart of the election around it. You know, Trump will have Uranus very close to his mid heaven um, at the time of the election. Um, so this is. Um, um, this is a time certainly when his um, whole um, way forward completely changes. You know, the mid-heaven is how one projects oneself to the world. And so with Uranus on the mid-heaven, it is a, it's a time of um, uh, great, uh, great turmoil for him. Now, Trump's opponents might be interested by the fact that as the election starts, Mars is moving into his 12th house. And of course, the 12th house is often associated with prisons. And I, I'm not saying in his case, um, Mars in, on a, in, a, in going into a 12th house means he's going to go to prison. Um, there is a suggestion if Mars is going to, into his 12th house that, you know, it's I don't know, that's his private battles, maybe. But I wouldn't read too much into that. Um, what's perhaps more important is that, you know, we have this Venus-Jupiter opposition um, at the time of the election. Um, and it is 
on his sun node conjunction. So Trump does have Jupiter conjunct his sun. It's moving towards, well, it's actually Jupiter's going retrograde. But in the run up to the election, he's had Jupiter conjunct the sun. It's still there. Um, and uh, he's going to have Venus conjunct the moon. Um, Venus conjunct the moon, Jupiter conjunct the sun, potentially uh, may be quite good uh, for him. I mean, there is, um, you know, if you've got Venus, Venus is conjunct your moon, um, maybe right at the end he can pick up, <laughs> he can pick up female votes. Um, I don't know. Um, you know, I'm, as I said, I'm doing this, you know, very superficially. I'm certainly not saying that this this is necessarily good for Trump. There are other things to consider. Um, for example, you know, you look at Trump's solar return for 2024. Um, you know, this is his birthday before the election. He's got Saturn on the midheaven. Uh, I'm not sure how good that is. And this Saturn is going to be hitting his Gemini planets. You know, he's starting to hit his sun in Gemini, Mercury in Gemini. You know, that's uh, that's not too good. But, you know, we would not say how an election is going to turn just on the basis of a few Saturn transits. Now, as far as uh, Kamala Harris is concerned, um, so um, we don't know in what, capacity she will be standing in this election is she going to be standing in the um just as a vice president but if something happens to joe she might be standing as the real thing um now kamala harris has 24 gemini rising um so that venus jupiter that venus jupiter opposition which takes place during the election um is is on her ascendant um i think that's that's certainly something to consider uh she's got you know she just had she's had Ju jupiter crossing her ascendant so you know jupiter um has been affecting both kamala harris and trump's charts um i wonder with this venus maybe having venus on her seventh house cusp <sighs> Maybe maybe women will turn against her. How popular is uh, his is Kamala Harris amongst the female the female electorate? Um, I don't know. Um, but uh, again, you know, when you're talking about results of election elections, it's, you 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 can't just focus on the transits. And I and I must emphasise, but I'm being very very brief here. And finally, Joe Biden. Um, uh, how does the election occur to him, uh, assuming he's he's still um, he's still around? Well, Mercury is exactly on his ascendant. Um, that uh, is is possibly possibly good. The fact that he's got he's got Mercury um, Mercury right there. Um, you know, he's able to communicate. He's communicate his 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 message and so forth. But it's it's triggering something else. You see, it's all, it's he's you see in his natal chart he's got ascendant opposition Mercury, uh, and otherwise he's got Mercury on a descendant. So Mercury will not just be on his ascendant, but it will be opposition his opposition his Uranus, um, and it's kind of square his North Node. Um, so it triggers this North Node Uranus ascendant configuration. Um, and that sort of indicates some kind of surprise um, if if he's still around. Um, so um, in looking in looking at these three charts, um, I'm just being really brief. Um, I'm not I'm not saying uh, at this stage that any of those three are going to make it for a, for a, perhaps for a second term or you know, or in in Kamala Harris's case to get to the White House. I, I don't know uh, yet. I mean, I certainly have an idea, but I'm just not ready to um, come, up, come up with that idea. And I must emphasize that, you know, the winner of an election, uh, the person who wins an election, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of 
a very determined, fated thing that doesn't just focus on the individual, it focuses on the collective. And I am not convinced you can just look at a natal chart like I've been doing here. Here's Trump's chart, here's Kamala Harris, but Joe Biden's chart and say, oh, it's looking good, they're going to win. I, I, I don't think it's like that. Because if it were, to, if that were to be the case, then you could choose, as I said, you could choose um, candidates simply based on their horoscopes. And, you know, that's not going to work. Um, you cannot, um, you cannot um, create a winning candidate just by focusing on a chart. And you do have to look at other things. You have to look at, um, um, you know, what's going on, soci on, on in society. You have got to look at sort of collective things, what, what the planets, are, what the outer planets are doing. Um, it's not it's not just it's not just about individuals and I know we like to focus on individuals but I don't think that that's that's the way to do it um, although you know you do have cases like you know Obama had certainly from a Hindu, Indian Hindu perspective he had a brilliant chart when he won into 2008 you could really tell that he was going to win um, if you you know if you'd had the time of birth and you looked at his Indian chart and you were objective, um, I think that was quite that was quite clear. But in general, you do have to look beyond the individual. Anyway, that's all I'm going to say for the presidential election for the moment. And, you know, sorry to have been a bit vague um, when talking about the individuals and being so being so brief about it. Um, but uh, I only have a limited amount of time and I'm still I'm still making up my mind about who's going to win. Um, I've, you know, I do have, or at least who's going to lose. I'm getting an idea about who's not going to win, um, but I'm not, I'm not quite ready to um, make a, a clear forecast about that yet. Anyway, thanks for listening, and I will talk to you again um, tomorrow.